about eight and a half thousand meters above sea level. I mean, this is where airliners fly. And I'm trying to make all these decisions and I feel out of my comfort zone. I'm feeling the pressure really intensely. But those final 10, 15 steps to the top, nobody else around. I mean, how does that feel? I mean, it's indescribable. When we have a big trip, and when I say big trip, 14 mountains in the world above 8,000 meters. And you need to be fit, you need to be on, on your game. You need confidence, you need the skill set, um, you, you need to be reliable, physically fit, mentally prepared. I try to keep myself at a good level the whole time. I'm 70, 80% fit right through the year. Nutrition is really important. So my training is, is a you know, concoction of all of those things. And if anyone's not aligned well, then my confidence slowly starts to get eroded. You can't be over prepared for something. You know, get it wrong on Mount Everest, get it wrong at 8,000 meters. Now that mountain's gonna come around and bite you in the backside really hard. Kit-wise, uh, there's, you know, there's certain go-to items in the garage, obviously. Their favorite ice axes, crampons, and then on the big, big mountains, it's down suits, sleeping bags with arms and, and things like that. And then there's luxury items on the periphery. I, I like really good washing kits. Uh, I like to shave. It's that cleansing process. It's the little luxuries that can make a big difference to how you feel and how you perform on the mountain. The physicality of climbing the mountain is still as hard now as it ever was. What's changed is technology, better weather forecasting, clothing, and knowledge. The knowledge of how to go about climbing. It has made it easier, it has made it safer. It's still dangerous and it's still hard. The human species thrives under pressure. It thrives in conflict. It thrives in adversity. And it's only stepping outside of your comfort zone can you experience that.